I lost touch with Penny Phillips when I was about eight. Before then, we were together most of the time. And what instigated the separation? I don't know. I suppose we sort of outgrew each other. The thing is, I don't really use the internet very much. I, I just, it sounded like a laugh. I mean, when was the last time I saw Raymond Sandpit? 1982. Keep hang on. Wait, can you, can you do a left when we get into Hounslow, please? Thanks. Today, Phil is filing for divorce from his wife, Deborah. Both Phil French and Jenny Diamond have had their lives torn apart by the new internet craze. <laughs> London, England, seven million people. That's seven million possible friends for you or I. With the current house prices, some of us would be inclined to say that seven million friends is enough. But living alongside us in this great city is an underclass of imaginary friends. Although there are no official figures, the IF report estimates that there could be up to three million. That's three million people who don't have passports, who don't pay taxes, and who almost certainly don't get involved in community activities. Phil French is a pilot who lives near Stansted. He's 29 years old and works for a popular budget airline. I was just messing around getting nostalgic. You see, here I am, a father, a high flyer, a homeowner. I just, I didn't feel old enough for the responsibility. So I logged on to Imaginary Friends Reunited and posted a message. Within three hours, Phil got a message back. Hello, Phil. Long time no see. Why don't we meet up on the weekend? Go somewhere nice. Whistle three times and I'll be there. Raymond. That Saturday afternoon, Phil went to the park. <whistles> Raymond Sandpit! This is a familiar story to many. However, most users of Imaginary Friends Reunited are office workers, wasting time. Until two years ago, Jenny Diamond was a database manager in Rygate. She logged on to Imaginary Friends Reunited for fun. I wrote to Penny on the off chance that she might be there. And did she write back? Straight away. She said that she'd pop over to see me at the weekend. When Penny Phillips did come round, it changed Jenny's life forever. She got to my place at about six. Just as I was ready to settle in for the night, I put out that Hugh Grant film. I was watching the trailers and I turned around and there she was, all dressed up. She said, let's go clubbing. I told her I was skint. I'm skint. And she said she'd pay, so I thought, why not? Did she pay? No. She just snuck through straight past the bouncer. I had to pay for myself. She's always been like that. That night, Jenny Diamond got drunk and went home with a man she had never met before. Did you feel guilty? Did you feel as though your moral values had been compromised? Um, no. A bit, maybe. Jenny and Penny are now prostitutes. They're currently doing a two-for-one offer for all imaginary friends reunited users. Behind me, in this Magistrate's Court. Captain Philip French and his wife Deborah are filing for divorce. Just a year ago, they seemed to have a dream life. I used to trust him so much. He'd tell me everything. This one day I came out from the park and I thought something was weird because his car was at home and he was supposed to be at work. So I walked up the stairs. Oh, Raymond. I'm so glad you feel the same way as I do. Sorry, I can't. 
<laughs> Consultant psychiatrist Dr. Raju Mittal is an expert at treating people with imaginary friends. In relationships, imaginary friends always seem to take more than they give. Why would you say that is? Very imaginary. I'm on my way to find the man who put Jenny and Penny on the game. The man responsible for leaving Phil and Raymond with only one income and heavy alimony payments. This picturesque house in Wilmslow is the registered office for Imaginary Friends Reunited. The owner, Roger Elk, has just gone inside. I'm going to question him about some of the lives he has ruined. Hello? Hi, my name's Chris Park. I'm from the IF Report. I'd like to interview you about some of your business practices. You'll break the chain. Eventually, after a discussion with little Davy Whoopsie, Roger let me in. So why did you set up Imaginary Friends Reunited? Well, it was Davy's idea, wasn't it? You see, uh, we lost touch when we were about 12, and then... Uh, not long after my breakdown, I found him sitting in the apple tree, wasn't it? Um, and then before I knew it, he'd moved in. And we were sitting one night, weren't we? And we were saying uh, what a pity it was that so many people lost touch with their imaginary friends. So we just set up the website. And how exactly does it work? Davy? Oh, okay. Uh, well, you send an email uh, and you send a nominal sum, which we call the commitment. And um, then we send a secret message back saying how you can find your friend. And the rest is down to the two of you. Statistics indicate that every man, woman and child needs friends. However, the closest friends the most enduring friendships aren't imaginary. Think about it. If you're having a problem with an imaginary friend, or if you are an imaginary friend and have lost contact with someone special, then why not visit our website where you'll find details of support groups and helplines. Yeah.